This is your homework for compound interest. So $1,800 is deposited into an account earning 6% interest. How much will be in the account at the end of 18 years? So if you are compounding quarterly, N equals four. If you're doing it weekly, that's 52 weeks in a year, N would be 52. Which one would you think give you more money? And the more times you compound, the more money you get. So what would the setup look like? It's 1,800, one plus, the interest rate as a decimal, divided by four, four again, and then how many years? So put that in your calculator, and you get $5,258.08. If you compound it 52 times a year, it's almost the same setup, but the difference is it's going to be 52, so both here and here, times 18. And so how much more money would be in there now? Now you'd have $5,297.12. Done. Number two. In number two, Erica was given $300 for her birthday and decided to put it in a savings account that earns 3.75%. If she makes no other deposits withdrawals, find her account balance after 10 years. And semi-annually means twice a year. So it'd be 300, one plus 0 0.0375 divided by two, and then 10 years. So that's $434.98 using your calculator. Daily means 365 times per year. So everything else would stay the same, except uh, N would be 365 in the formula. And then again, use your calculator. And you'd expect it to be a little more, which it is, not a lot more, $436.49. The more money you start with, the more difference you'd see. If this was three million, then you'd see a bit more of a gap. All right, number three. Uh, 2,750 deposit was made, earns an account of two and three quarters. That's 2.75 to make it easier. Uh, compounded weekly. So weekly means N is uh, 52 weeks a year. And find the balance after nine years. So let's break it down. 2,750, one plus the interest rate, move the decimal back, 0 0.0275. Um, weekly means 52 weeks a year. And then after nine years. So you have a formula, be a good reader. Put in the numbers given, and then it's super simple. So it's 35, uh, 35, it's $3,522.02. Done. Number four, Jason saved money and accumulated $1,700. He's going to put it in an account that earns 4%, compounded monthly, which means there's 12 months in a year. And then how much will be in there after 12 years? So 1,700, one plus, 4% as a decimal, compounded 12 times a year for 12 years. And you get 2,000. Seven hundred and forty-five dollars and thirteen cents. Number five. In January of two thousand three, Jalen deposited one thousand four hundred fifty dollars into account. It's earning five percent, compounded semi-annually. That's twice a year. There are no other da da da. Find the total interest earned by the end of December twenty seventeen. So he went from the beginning in January, right, to the end. So 
I know I'm starting with 1,450. The interest rate as a decimal is 0 0.05. Semi-annually means twice a year. So the only tricky part is how many years that is. So 2003 to December 2017 at the end of the year. So 2003 to 17, that's 14 years plus one more, right? So if it's to the end of the year, we have to add that extra year. There's 15 years there because it's almost like it says 2018, right? If we go from January to one, like January 2018, because it's to the end of 2017. So 2003 to 2018, that's where the 15 comes from. So at the beginning of January 2018, what would it be? All right, put this in your calculator and you get $1,591.47. Number six. In second grade, Eliza was given $500. This money was deposited into a savings account, earns 3% compounded quarterly. Find the account balance if there are no other um, at graduation. So graduation, let's assume graduation's in, you know, 12th grade. So second grade to 12th grade, let's assume that's 10 years and you graduated on time. Put that in the calculator. So from second grade to 12th grade, that's 10 years. That's, oh my goodness, don't spend it all at once. $674.17. Done. Number seven. Moises was given $1,500 signing bonus at his new job. He's going to invest money that earns 6% compounded continuously. That's E. Find the balance after 10 years. Done. So know your formula. As you read, plug in the numbers, use your calculator. These can be really easy questions, right? If you allow yourself to be a good reader and plug in the numbers you see. Number eight, suppose $28 is deposited. Again, 2.5% compounded continuously. So make sure you write it as a decimal. Oh, this is not the right formula. Compounded continuously, 2,800E, 0 0.025, and then after 25 years. And just use your calculator. If you make a mistake, scratch it out. All good. That's $5,231.09. Two left for your homework. We can get this done. Look how good we're doing. They're doing so fast, so good. Here we go. Find the balance of an account after seven years. $600 was deposited, and the interest rate is 11.25%. That's a great rate. Compounded continuously. That's E. As a decimal, that'd be 0 0.1125. Seven years. Let's go. How much money is that? Use your calculator, and it's $1,318.74. One left for your homework. I'm so proud of you. We're there. Number 10. Jackie wants to invest $2,000 into an 18-year college fund for her new child. Option A has 6% compounded bi-monthly. So this is going to be option A. So if it's bi-monthly, twice a month, that means that it's 24 times a year. And the interest rate is 6%. So this is going to be the formula for compounded bi-monthly. And it's 18. So there's your uh, formula there for compounded bi-monthly, 24 times a year. Use your calculator. And it's $5,881.43. Option B has 7.5% interest rate compounded continuously. So now we start with 2000 but now we're going to use E 
and the interest rate as a decimal is 0 0.075 and again 18 years so it's 2000 e to that and which one's the better option i can already tell right before you even calculate it seven and a half percent and compounded continuously both are better seven thousand seven hundred and fourteen dollars and 85 cents then the question is how much more money will she use by using that option so this is the better option and then how much better is option B then you take the two money and we subtract them so take your calculator and subtract the two options and you get one thousand eight hundred thirty three dollars and forty two cents so option B is better by that much money over 18 years mr. G math over and out I'm proud of you for doing your homework till next time